G'day mate, welcome to Captive Industry with me, Jetty. Today, I want to talk to you about copper smelters. Why copper smelters, you may ask? Well, it's because they're slightly different from iron smelters, in the fact you need to wash your copper at the end of the process. And it is very important to wash your copper after you finish the process. Also, I've seen many builds. I've seen many builds that once people have made impure copper, they're trucking that across the map to wash it because they don't have any water locally. Whereas I want to do everything as part of a single process. Finally, as always, I want to keep these builds as tight and compact and as efficient as possible and also spend the least amount of construction parts to do so. So if you see some sort of optimization, if you see or, or you have a better build yourself, by all means, leave them down in the comment section. Maybe we can all improve our builds together. But I also will remind you there are chapters in the description should you need to come back and double check the placement of any of the belts that should help you to find the right spot. So now we know the plan. Can I ask you a favor? Just a little one can you click the like button now i will remind you later in the video if you're not at all happy with the final build to remove your like but till then can i just like borrow that like for say 15 minutes 15 minutes it's all the time i need now with all that out of the way we need to clear the slate and then we can get started so with a clean construction area i'm gonna actually spin around i'm gonna start at the back i'm gonna start at the back always like starting at the back with the belts and we're gonna start with the u-shaped connector now i do want to mention that i'm gonna build hard up against one of those black lines because i do post high resolution screenshots on my discord server after the fact at which point you guys can can go in there, count in the tiles and all that sort of stuff if you want, if you want to know exactly how many tiles you need to keep clear to build one of these smelters. But we're going to start with, we're going to assume it's going to be the copper ore belt. And this time around, I'm actually going to make sure, I'm going to bring in my ore, my copper ore, my coal, and remove my slag all at one side, because why not? If you choose to do yours differently, just reverse belts as required. Okay, so we have flat belt, that's gonna be our copper ore. We have one belt up, which is gonna be our coal. If you have this problem where they wanna connect, press the R button and then just build it straight over the top. It turns off the magnets, belts don't try to connect if they don't have magnetic power. Okay, then we need a height belt, uh, a belt at height two. That's a much better way of saying it. Uh, and we're gonna bring that back this way. That's gonna be for our slag. Okay, we're just putting in the belts for now. They're just like a guideline. All right, next thing we're going to need is under meteorology, we need the blast furnace itself. I want to put the first one three tiles away and hard up against that black line. First one we don't actually care about. It's going to get deleted. It's just there for spacing. All right, second one we're going to put here. And the very important thing is I want to make sure that that slag is outputting to the middle. Okay, I want to put one beside it. And again, I want to make sure the two slag lines are beside one another. So we press the F button to flip it, to flip the inputs and the outputs and all that sort of stuff. Make sure the two slag lines are right beside one another. Okay, with that done, I can cancel that because you were there for a placement, uh, placeholder only. And we're going to go to a U-shaped connector. I'm going to run my first belt in for my copper ore. I'm going to run my second belt off the coal line. There we go connect please thank you uh and then my last belt being the slag i'm going to come out of the machine i'm going to go beside and back one top and then after i've clicked once i'm going to drag it up to the top belt and then this one i'm going to plug in there okay so that's our belts done now i do want to mention very quickly that this is going to use 24 copper ore this is going to use 24 copper ore nine coal 12 slag okay 24 copper ore duh twice is 48 our belts move 60 so we can't put any more smelters on the same copper ore belt. As for the coal belt, not an issue. Nine and nine is 18. We can do another couple of sets without any hassle. And our slag being 12, we could, well, we could do five. We could do five per belt of slag and fill a slag output belt. Realistically, you might want to double this. You're probably not going to. Generally, two smelters is enough. Maybe as you get further into tier two lab science and all sorts of things, you might want to double this and have two input belts by the same token. At that sort of that stage, you get upgraded tier two belts anyway. So, you know, you probably don't need to upgrade the belts. All right. But with that out of the way, we're going to flip around to the other side and we're going to go on to the metal caster. So, metal caster, I want to have the in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That way, that way. Okay. I want to have the input. Uh, line up with that slag output belt and I need a three tile gap so one two three look we're on the next big dark line and I'm going to put that there uh, it needs a friend and it also needs a friend on the other side now very very important do you want to mention is the output for this is as close is is currently close to the blast furnace 
I don't want it close to the blast furnace. I don't want to run the belts the extra couple of tiles. So we're going to press F to flip it and then rotate it back around. And now it is as far away from the blast furnace as possible. Again, he's going to need a friend as well. All right. So with that out of the way, we go back to our belts. We're going to go to multi-channel. I'm going to come down straight ahead to run under the machine, come over to the middle and plug into the first machine. Now it's going to make the first machine happy, second machine unhappy. As always, we're going to drag on from there to the next machine. That's going to make first machine happy, second, well, second machine happy, third machine happy, fourth machine unhappy, and we're just going to drag along. And this one I want to drag a little bit long because we're going to use that for spacing in a minute. All right, the last thing I need to do with the molten channel is plug the other machine in and we're done with pretty much here. The only thing I need to do is I need to handle the exhaust. Now the exhaust, I'm going to cover very very quickly because you have two options so we have a smokestack and look honestly that's your best option okay a smokestack costs 10 construction parts it outputs 60 exhaust this makes 24 and you might say look jenny 24 and 24 is 48 you, you could join them together and you are entirely correct but if for whatever reason i decide to run either of these smelters with a unity boost because there is a certain amount of material on the belt. There's a certain amount of material in the machine. There's a certain amount of buffered material that they can burn off with a short unity boost. I could run the metal casters again with a unity boost. The catch is if I have 24 plus 24 being 48 and a unity boost on top of that, it's more than a single smokestack in output. So you can build a single smokestack and we will talk about a single smokestack, but I do not recommend it just so we know. All right, we're going to come out from the pipe. We're going to come up one tile up. Uh, down one tile rather we're going to then move to height one we're going to stop one tile in front of the metal uh molten channel we're then going to come to the here we're going to stop again one tile in front i plug straight into there and you into there and you cost 10 construction parts two of them would have cost 20 currently you know i've spent 10 plus one being 11 plus six being 17 two smokestacks would have cost me 20 it's just quicker it's just quicker all right and the last thing last machine we need at least is going to be the cop copper electrolysis machine now this has impure impure copper input on one side along with water and the pure copper output on the other side so what i want to do is i want to flip this and i want to put it hard up against that molten channel okay and that's going to sort of line it up one tile offset from the input and that's perfectly fine we're going to copy this we're going to flip it so it's mirrored the other one and that's those two machines done so the only other thing we need to do is at least with transports for right now is plug this into here and this into here now you're going to output 12 you're going to output 12 you're going to consume 24 you're then going to wash the copper and you're going to give us 19 and a half which is it's a little bit of a loss but you do get an acid recipe later on which will actually have a better ratio for the conversion so you'll have less losses so when it comes to that you literally change over the pipe which we're going to talk about in a minute but that's one side done our second side is one and two uh, as for our output belt cost we're talking about uh three construction parts and two kilowatts worth of power and one construction part and one kilowatt worth of power so we're talking what three kilowatts six kilowatts and four parts i'd like to keep things cheap okay uh last thing i want to do is i want to remove this molten channel here here because we don't need it but i do need storage which we're going to plug in directly into the back of these two machines. Why? Well, one, if I don't add belts, it saves me money. Didn't I just mention I was cheap? Two, well, it saves me money in parts. I did mention I was cheap, right? Speaking of being cheap, look, this channel is 100% supported by you guys, okay? I don't run ads. There is an ad at the start of the video, which I have to put in. Otherwise, YouTube tanks the videos. Trust me, I've tried. And there's an ad normally at the end of the video after the video is finished watching. That's it. The rest, of the rest of the support of the channel is done by you guys. I ask you guys to support the channel. And like I said, I'm cheap. And the only reason I bring that up is YouTube membership started a dollar. Yeah, I'm that cheap. And Patreon membership is $2 which is also cheap. For that, you get early access to videos. You come jump on our Discord server. You get private access to the secret channel where we keep the nice chairs or the cocktails. And at the same time, I do get uh, give you guys early access to videos. Let's Plays a couple of days beforehand, tutorial videos like this, hours to a day, all depends on the release schedule and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so instead of supporting the channel, I would very, very much appreciate it. But that is at least this half of the build. The only thing we have to do is we have to add that water pipe in. Now, I got a water tank here and i in my case i've connected to groundwater pump and the reason i've done that is well i happen to have groundwater right here but 
at the end of the day, these guys need six water apiece. Six and six is 12. A truck carries 20 items. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a fluid storage uh, here. I'm going to say, I want you to have water and I want you to keep full. Mm, one less than full. One less than full. Yep, I want you to keep full. And we're going to quick deliver and unpause that. Uh, it'll get built at the same time we mass build everything else. And that's going to be our water source because it's quicker and easier for the trucks to transport 20 water and then run this machine, well, one of these machines three times. Three times? Yeah, that will use 18 water, giving us about 60 copper, roughly, a little bit less, but about 60 copper compared to them picking up the impure copper driving across the map and dropping it in one of these. This is why we do it this way. At the end of the day, you could, where are we? Uh, water, rainwater harvester. If you want to put down five or six of these and then plug the pipes in here and then plug the pipes in here, you're pretty much golden. So pipes, uh, pipes we do need to talk about. I want to bring you up two tiles and then I want to aim for the far side of this gap. As you can see, we left this two tile, well, We've ended up with a one tile gap here, but actually it's two tiles in here. So we want to bring this right across and dump that over there. And the main thing I do want to point out when it comes to camping industry is, let's rotate you around, is it has soft clearances. So as we can see, the yellow squares is what space this takes up. And I can slide that under the pipe, not an issue. I can't slide it under the pillars. So the fact that we built everything else first actually means that when we select one of these guys, we can see that there's actually just a couple of, uh, hang on, can we turn on uh, the layers? There we go. We can, we have these couple of tiles in here that are perfectly free, which is where it's gonna park those pillars. All right, speaking of pipes, uh, we need to bring pipe from here up to the middle, 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 thank you, and up to there. All right, that is our water connection. Again, like I said, we're just going to bring it in from a tank. It's not that hard to do. You can put down a couple of water collectors, uh, sorry, rain catchers, whatever it happens to be. It's pretty easy to get done. All right, next thing we need to do is we need to talk about our loose storage. So loose storage, I want to put hard up against the machine, hard up against the belt. I want to slide it over to the left one. All right, that is going to be our copper ore, which we're going to set to, you know, keep mostly full. All right, next one is going to be coal. We're going to rotate that 90 degrees and have it face the blast furnace. Next one is going to be our slag, which we're going to rotate 180 degrees to face away from the blast furnace. All right, so let's talk about these belts. We need to remove that belt uh, because I want a new belt to go straight in there. That's going to be our copper ore. Remember, we can't really feed past here, so we're just going to get rid of all that. Uh, second one is going to be our coal, which we're going to come out from the coal machine. I'm going to move one tile just to make sure it stays flat on the ground. In case, for whatever reason, I need to actually plug something into that that curve or that connector, it's sort of handy to have make sure it's flat on the ground. All right, then we're going to take it up to here, and that's going to be our coal input. Obviously, we don't need anything on the right. Last one is going to be our slag, which we're going to start from the top belt. And I'm going to drag in this general direction. Now, as you can see, the belts do funny things. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to press uh, E twice to go up. And then I'm going to press R so it doesn't try to connect to anything anymore. I'm going to stop above the coal output, turn off the R button, take it down there. All right. So you are coal, which we're going to drag up to about here. You are going to be slag, which is going to be a waste product, which we're going to drag down to uh, about halfway. Uh, that is useless belt. These technically I'm not using right now, but you know, we might end up doubling the smelter in the future, at which point I might use them. Obviously, you have to slide the water pipe along, but that is pretty much the whole build. Pretty much the whole build up and done. Uh, we did show the alternate for the exhaust, and the only thing I need to do is, as always, mass build this, and we need to wait for the trucks to arrive. So I think we're going to uh, sit right about here. So this is a good time for me to remind you guys that you know how you click that like button before? Well, if you didn't like this build, you didn't like how I put this build together, anything like that, now is a good time for you to remove your like. By the same token, if you didn't put it in earlier, if you didn't click the like button earlier, now is a good time to consider, you know, actually clicking it right now. Because we're just waiting for trucks to arrive. We're waiting for all the raw materials to get dropped off. The smelters will kick in. The metal casters will kick in. The electrolysis machines will kick in. It's going to take a minute. So you've got more than enough time to just scroll down a little bit, click the like button. At the same time, I do want to mention that if you're liking these sorts of videos, you're liking these sort of build guys and tutorials, I am going to have some upcoming ones on, on, on digging and maintenance and a whole bunch of other things. 
can you do me a favor? Can you click the subscribe button? It very, very much helps out the channel. And it means that when I publish these sorts of videos, you're going to get a notification, which providing you've turned on the bell could be very, very important because I have a feeling with the amount of tutorial videos I have coming to my mind and I'm trying to get recorded in a hurry, we could have a number of videos coming out in short order back to back. All right, with the, the system up and at least running, we're going to look at these guys first. Uh... Oh, water's just arriving. There we go. Water's just arriving. That has export on, doesn't it? Yeah, it has export on. Okay, so water's arriving. Oop, stop. We have nine water in the pipe. We have 37 in the tank. Uh, and you have not done a process yet. Perfect. So what I want to do is I want to look at this process. This is going to output 19 and a half uh, copper ore. Because it's directly connected to the actual building, rather than you having to wait, like, well, wait for the the plate to get into the unit storage at the speed the belt runs it's pretty much instantaneous as you can see we got 26 very 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 quickly and obviously we should have another 26 along well as i click off it of course it happens all right so that is the build that is the build in its entirety you could double the whole build and take a extra um copper ore belt around the side and i do need to thank jake fox jake fox who pointed out to me the f button stops this belt doing this stupid thing unless you run hard across past that belt i knew the f button did something i just hadn't worked out what the hell it did well now we all know all right so that is the build in its entirety uh as always i'll be posting some high resolution screenshots uh with the grid turned on on my discord server if you want to check them out you want to count out how many tiles it's quite narrow it's quite long i didn't really see a better way of shortening it without spending a lot of power electricity and construction parts on belts so we went with a slightly more a slightly elongated build but at the end of the day it's quite efficient and that's that's the important thing and it's really not that expensive to build you can go back and check the video when i spent all the uni to insta build it but it didn't cost that much and i will mention that one of these is pretty much enough to get you up to tech level two from tech level two or, or research lab level two onwards you borderline borderline running one of these you might need a second one all depends on your particular play style and how quickly you're building but with all that said this one we calling this video so thank you guys so much for watching do hope you've enjoyed it don't forget there is a playlist down the bottom if you want to look at more builds like this more tutorial videos like this all about captain and industry but with all that said yes i'm jd players thank you guys so much for watching do hope you've enjoyed i'll see you guys in the very next video all right bye